Hey, uh, it's Rob down here in the Tone Dungeon. Um, finished up rewinding a set of uh, K speed bump pickups for Noah in Denver, Colorado. Um, it was a three pickup set. And this video just kind of takes you through, hopefully, um, our process for rewinding these. These are kind of notoriously um, pain in the ass pickups to um, to rewind and hope you'll see why um, and they're you know they, they they're a kind of love them or hate them sort of pickup I love them um, I've got my tricks to make rewinding them as painless as possible I think they're really great um, they are definitely unique they are definitely from a different time um, when maybe kind of definitely what we kind of take for granted is, is, you know, standard construction was not really established yet. So, um, check it out, like the video, subscribe, more importantly, buy some pickups if you have some speed bump pickups, some K speed bump pickups. Send them in and I will fix them up for you. So, here we go. Um, but the only thing that's actually holding these covers on is the wax that they were potted in. Um, sometimes they're falling apart like this one is, which I should probably s stop, but I can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop. This is going to make it harder to do, but here we are. It's going. That's not how you do it. It's 100% not how you do it. Anyway, it's the wax. All The, the only thing that holds these covers on is the wax that they're potted in but I think the way that they must have done it back in the factory is like they would fill this up with a, a wax that was um, you know kind of starting to cool and then they would just squish this down in there and that's how they would do it maybe I don't know but that seems to be the way that they would do it so to get these uh, to get these, uh, um, there's only one way to get these covers off, um, if they're not falling off, which sometimes they are. And I'm also going to confess one weird thing I do that I like to do. He said, I saved this wax. Maybe that makes me a weirdo. This is going to burn. No. So there's that. And then. Here's the old wax. Going into the Gemini Pickups wax pot. This is. I don't know why this is so fascinating to me. To put this wax back into my wax. <laughs> oh, anyway. So, I'm going to do this with all three of these, and then we'll move on. Okay. Cut! The cover's off. Um, you're going to end up with something like, well, not something like this. You're going to end up with exactly this. I had the presence of mind to... Uh, um, not strip all of these without showing you guys. So there is the gigantic um, rough cast Alnico magnet. Um, pretty much the biggest uh, Alnico magnet that I've seen in a common production guitar. Um, and as you can see, the coil is just wrapped directly around the magnet. Anyway, so the top plate is this little piece of fiberboard, although I think actually it was probably fish paper um, from the time. That's got to go. They just had that slipped on there. And then you're starting to see how small this coil actually is on these dudes. All this has got to go. It's gooped up. I was wanting to show. That's how big, that's the coil. That's all you get. It's all you get, kids. So anyway, that top plate's on there. And then, so, 
and then they would wrap the coil directly around the magnet. So off comes this coil. Alright, so off comes this guy. Let's get him. There we go. So long, mister. We had a long we had a long mediocre life. Anyway, so alright, so that top plate was on there. Here the, the, the magnet is uh, wrapped in tape to prevent the coil from, from getting on the, uh, the metallic uh, magnet. And then the base plate itself, which is steel, also has a layer of tape to prevent uh, shorting the coil shorting on any of the metal stuff. Here's the problem. It always does. So, um, because one of the other crazy things about this guy is, um, so this magnet, no real, this is usually where I slice my finger, so Marcellus, be prepared with the, uh, first aid kit. Yeah, exactly. Of course, always. <clears throat> What I'm trying to show is that this giant magnet is in, is sitting in, or stuck in, this giant metal clip. Oh, and the other thing is, is that the start of the coil is wired directly to the base plate. There's no leads. None of the, there's no extra leads on this coil. The coil just goes straight to the out wire. So that's another thing that fails. There she is. There's the behemoth. And here is this razor sharp metal clip that that thing goes into, which, let's see if I can get this 70 year old tape off of here. Anyway, there's the clip that it goes into. And we'll go from there. All right, cut. All right, so here is the uh, base plate assembly all stripped. Here you see the uh, spring steel uh, clip that the big magnet goes into and here you can actually see that is where the start of the coil is soldered directly to the clip. That spot of solder is where the uh, ground, come on focus would you? That spot of solder right there is where the ground is uh, for the lead is soldered on so I guess they like solder that the, the coil start there and then they cover it in tape and then they wind the coil who knows what they were doing back then it was a wild time at the uh, K factory we're ready to put these back together I didn't show um, the part where I cut out the plates um, but you can watch some other videos where I cut sh stuff out on the laser. I'm not supposed to cuss as much because yeah, you know, Katie's grandpa watches the videos on YouTube and he gets upset when I cuss too much. He uses profanity. And he's right. I shouldn't. Cuss you shouldn't. Him. This should be uh, should family just, friendly. Well, it should be. I should try to be a little bit more professional. That's what I should be. Um, okay, so um, basically, as far as pickups go, this. Uh, this one is made almost entirely out of razor sharp metal, which is bad. So um, what Kay did is they covered this bottom piece with masking tape 
and then there was a little, um, there was the top plate, which was actually fish paper, which was a predecessor to the fiberboard that, that I usually use. I cut these plates out of fiberboard because one, I have it, two, I know it's tough, three, I have the shape saved so that I can do these pickups fairly quickly. Um, so one thing I do, if um, a lot of these were three pickup guitars, um, I'll do the middle pickup, reverse wound, reverse polarity. I do like to charge the mag, make sure the magnets are charged all the way up, um, just because that's how that's how I do it. Other people probably do these pickups a different way, but I've got my way where I don't know if I've said this explicitly, but this is the most miserable pickup that there is to rewind. But I have all of my, I've kind of put together all of my tricks to where I can do it somewhat painlessly. Anyway, so we've got the top plate on there. This uh, plate that I've got cut out um, to cover up the bottom. Um, it just kind of slips back in there, back into the, uh, back into the clip. Everything's good there. However, obviously, this center piece, um, the clip, the razor sharp spring steel, needs to be taped fairly thoroughly. Now the other thing, I felt so smart when I came up with this, but I don't want to brag about it too much because I'm probably like the last guy in the world to figure this out. The other thing that makes these pickups particularly difficult is they have the, the spring that they used is attached to the pickup. Um, and usually, these are kind of old and, and bent, but usually when they're unsprung, they're sticking up right in the way. So if you tried to rewind this pickup kind of as is, the spring would be in the way. So guys do it different ways, but I just kind of cut this little piece of steel um, and rounded it so that I can actually put this in there and it'll hold it out of the way. I don't want to brag about that too much, that I'm super smart, because again, I'm probably the last guy to figure it out. Everybody else has probably been doing it this way for years. But as you can see, I just tighten it down until it is out of the way. Um, and of course, right now, I can't find the other one for the other side, but that's okay. So, just need to, you just have to really thoroughly tape um, the center of this because, again, um, it would be, it's bad enough that. Um, you know, it's an Alnico magnet, so it's um, conductive. So you definitely don't want your um, your coil wire to short out on that. That's bad enough, but this spring steel is like, for real, just like razor sharp. So not only do I have to cover it up, but I have to put kind of enough extra on there to where it won't cut right through the tape that I just put on. And anyway, so that's all taped up. There it is. I knew it was right there. It's the spot where I keep these. In case you were wondering, I cleaned my bench 15 minutes ago. I claim it is spotless. Anyway, so there you go. All right, check it out. Okay, so this guy is ready to wind. And you see the magnet does stick up a little bit because it will. Um, it will, a little bit of it will fit into 
that speed bump. And I feel like they originally, um, again, the cover was only held on with the potting wax, but I feel like they did rely on some physical contact between the cover and this magnet because that's the only way that the cover was going to be grounded. Um, you'll, what you'll see when I put this back together, I actually add a little ground strap between the cover and, uh, and the base plate just so that it is grounded. Um, but there you go. This dude is ready to unwind. Cut! Um, this is actually the middle pickup. that I'm getting ready to wind here. Um, traditionally, these pickups have between, our, the output is between 5.6K uh, and 5.8K. So what I like to do, and have had good luck doing, uh, maybe not everybody will like it, but I, I, I do the neck pickup to around 5.7, I do the bridge pickup to around 6.4 and um, the middle pickup I just split the difference. Now what that, what that means in, uh, basically what it ends up meaning is that the bridge pickup gets 5,000 turns of 44 gauge wire, which is what these things had. And, uh, and then I just go down the 5,000 turns of 44 gauge wire that ends up being right around 6'4, 6450, something like that. And um, so that's what I do. I just keep, just keep going with this Marcellus. I'll, uh, just keep filming all time lapse this shit. Oh no. What's your least favorite pickup to make? To make? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I would have said the lipstick tubes, but I'm kind of revisiting that because Mark sent me six to rewind. And, uh, oh shit. So, They actually weren't that bad, so I'm kind of revisiting that. Let's we'll see what we'll see what's we'll see what comes of that. If anything comes of that, so I'd like to, maybe I could do something. Okay, so we got 4,700 turns of 44 gauge wire. Um, I do like to do the middle pickup, reverse wound, reverse polarity, because it's easy enough to do and there's not really any drawback to speak of. Some people don't like to do it on the strats because they think, they feel like it makes it too quack, quacky, um, which I could dig that, but on these pickups, we really don't need to worry about that.
It's not bad. It's not bad. I can deal with that. Don't don't move, Marcellus. Don't you move. Don't you just stay right where you're. I just gotta get a piece of yellow wire here and then. Alright. This dude wanted fender style cloth leads on these. He's using this for a custom build of some sort. Um, the original, they weren't exactly, they were like, you know, they were like the fender braided, but not exactly so. But, uh, And one thing I do to make life a little bit easier when I go to assemble these, they're still held together by the wax. The potting wax is the only thing holding these dudes together. It does, which is fine, it does a totally fine job. But I do like to add a little ground strap from the cover to the to the other stuff it's just that way I know I've got good I know that the cover is grounded I don't have to worry about it pretty hot pretty hot pretty hot on my fingers damn Marcellus well, I do. You didn't tell me to tape this before I put that, got that cover ready. I even know that was a step, Rob. <laughs> what are you taping? Made me look. Uh, what am I taping? I'll tell you what, that's going the wrong way. I'm just taping this shit up, man. I'm just taping, just taking a little, just taping it up a little. Don't forget to tape it up a little bit yeah, before you yeah. put on that uh, that cover part. Yeah, 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 there we go. Got All right, so that's gonna go. Okay, so now, hopefully, people are people are gonna be screaming about this one. <laughs> Hold these covers on while I pot them. I just put a little bit of super glue. It's not enough to really, you know, change or do anything different. I can still easily get the cover off. Just for that initial stick. And now it will. It'll stay on there long enough for me to pot it. Okay. Okay. All right. Cut. All right. So Marcellus just called me or texted me. He said he's not coming in today, but I want to, I really want to uh, get these pickups done so I can get them back to the guy. They're all put together. Everything looks great. Um, actually really happy with how they turned out, um, but they obviously they need to be potted is that's the main thing that's holding them together so into the wax the wax they go I hooked up a vacuum pump to my um, to my wax pot but we're actually I'm not going to use it for this um, just because I don't really need to. Um, and I'm still kind of working out some issues with it. I'm getting a little low on wax, so I'm just kind of shoving these down because they're sitting on top of a bunch of marbles so that they don't actually sit on the bottom of the wax pot. Okay, so those are... In the wax, 30 minutes later, we're gonna pull them out. All right, this is the part that I maybe uh, could have put a little bit more forethought into as far as the filming goes, because when you get these out of the wax, the whole point is, is that you can't let any of the wax flow out of the pickup. So 
Uh, I really wish I had. Marcellus, I wish you were here to help me film this. Anyway, I got that one out pretty good. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to wipe this guy off of the outside, but keep him kind of upside down the whole time because uh, you want to keep the cover full of, you know, we want to keep the cover full of wax um, so that it'll cure in there. Um, but that's how you do it. That's how you pull them out of there. Okay, so I've got them. Uh, I found that I had to find the objects that I had two of. So I got two coffee cups and he's sitting upside down cooling off. I got two spools of 28 gauge Teflon wire. He's cooling off there. And then I got two short mason jars. He's cooling off there. So the, the thing I kept meaning to say is that I wish I had weighed these before I potted them so I could see how much wax was actually um, in there once they were all done because it's going to be a lot because uh, again the the um, the cover has to be like totally full of wax to hold it all together so that that volume is totally um, taken up which is the big reason of why I um, melt all the wax out of these pickups into my wax pot um, because I'm going to put even more of that back in when I go to do it. So, um, so yeah. So, all right. Are you ready? Action. All right. So these are all done. Um, I'm getting ready to put them in the mail right now. I don't really know what to say to kind of recap other than I guess one guy asked me about these, if they were worth rewinding. And I said, absolutely. And I still believe it. These uh, pickups are really, really cool um, at what they do. They are not an incredibly versatile pickup. Even like modern, um, you know, like country or modern roots rock is probably... Um, would be difficult with these, but for that like early 50s jump blues stuff, these are really, really cool. They respond really well to a uh, rewind. And not only that, if um, you kind of update the wiring, that uh, that also brings them to life a lot too. So somebody's knocking at the door, that's not good to go. Thank you.